All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to, oh my goodness, another edition of, nope, my FX Buddies, the podcast, and you're going to hear the background noise, it's, you know, just what can you do, life, <laughs> life is life, right, and surroundings means you're alive, and I would not have it any other way. Okay, all right, so today is April 1st. Well, let's see. Yeah, actually, I'm doing this early enough where it should post for April 1st. And my FX buddies can be found all over the internet. No, just kidding. But um, <laughs> if you do an internet search for my FX buddies, all the links come up. And um, the best one, in my opinion, is the blog because the blog will have a video and all the articles and today I'm going to show you a picture that isn't anywhere else because my technology skills are just so out of this world <laughs> what else there's Apple my FX buddies there's spotify.com my FX buddies I believe if you have a paid subscription, there's video, but there's definitely auto. And rss.com, R as in Robert, S as in Sam, S as in Sam.com has a good transcript uh, that I hope you can't hear these rubbing together. And then, uh, look, you see, I'm already messing up interrupting sentences so the transcript is good if you can't follow me which gee why can't you follow me right or if you don't understand the words that are coming out of my mouth um the transcripts helped so then i listened to one and for some reason i don't know if it's my system or if it's because i move a lot when i'm doing this and um, sometimes it pops, there's a popping sound, and a sound or two is missing. I'll try to be still, but, you know, I work with probably very low-grade equipment. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, you know, bear with me. All right, so that's it. Um, so, okay, so it was April Fool's Day. I hope no one played any brutal. I hate April Fool's. I am not. I don't like pranks. I don't like April Fool's. I don't like any of that stuff. I never did, even when I was a child. So I'm glad today's over. And it actually turned out to be quite an ugly day in the Middle East, right? Okay, so let, we'll get started. We'll go with, um, this came out today. This is probably the best article, in my opinion, today. Sadani receives an invitation from the Saudi Crown Prince to participate in the World Economic Forum. And if you didn't know, yes, they, they have many meetings, not just the one in Davos. All throughout the year, they have several. But this one is going to be hosted in the kingdom that's because that's what Saudi Arabia calls itself, the kingdom, uh, April 28th and 29th. So now this is not, this isn't the king. This is one of his princes, I guess. But yeah, so he invited him. And here's the key phrase. Let's see. He got a letter referred to close relations. And right. Okay, so here I'll read this sentence. The statement conveyed that Ben Salman, oh, they left out like four of his names because you're supposed to call him like Crown Crown Prince <laughs> and like four other names. But anyway, Ben Salman in a letter he sent to al Sudani referred to the close relations between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Iraq and that his participation will have a good impact on the success of the meeting's work. So, I'm reading into that. Hey, little brother, you know, you're trying to get your place in the global game. Come on, 
You, everyone loved you so much at the last World Economic Forum meeting. Come to this one too. And remember, Saudi Arabia was working really hard to try to get them in the World Trade Organization, which I still don't believe they are. They have ascended because they still haven't announced it. And there's been other meetings, right? But that's me. I know I'm out there alone by myself. But so here, Saudi Arabia, again, is uh, supporting Iraq. So I like that. And I'm really excited about this because I feel um, that the Middle East is, well, they're definitely not trying to cut oil, right, and go green. So I feel there'll be some pushback there like there was in, when they did that thing in Abu Dhabi. And I just believe that a lot of the craziness that the World Economic Forum wants to push on us 99 percenters, even though Iraq is not, you know, Iraq's trying to be one of the one percenters like they are, right? Um, I think they'll push back on all the nonsense that they're trying to push on this. Okay, and that's all I'm going to say here. So I was very excited to see that. It doesn't say if he accepted or not, but I bet you he did. And that will be after Sadani's trip here to Washington, if he still makes it. And I'll show you why I said if. Okay, here, uh, we can skip this. I'll just read this title, though. <laughs> we will dismiss you soon. Exchange companies threaten the central bank employee for his strange and unprofessional behavior. But when you read the article, he's actually doing his job. They just don't like what he's doing. But, um, okay, yeah, so that was actually Saturday. So we're on Saturday's meetings. Look who's back, Sadar. So you can read this if you want. Sadar, this is a very short, uh, he had actually been tweeting, but it had mostly been about um, religious stuff, right? Um, but this one, he's getting five committees together, I think. And it says the meeting was devoted to forming committees charged with communicating with the grassroots. So I'm thinking he's getting his people together, the ones that he wants to go out and talk to the people face to face, not on social media. That way his messages won't get out, you know, won't get leaked out. Well, that's what he's thinking anyway. Um, and this guy, I couldn't get his picture here, but his name is mm, whatever, Al Shamari. He was the talking piece for Sadar. They all have um, spokesmen. He was a spokesman for Sadar. Since Sadar disbanded his people, um, they went and got other jobs, right? But now here he is back in, um, back in the media talking about the nature of the Prime Minister's upcoming video uh, visit to Washington. And he doesn't say anything new, but you can read that. But I'm putting some little pieces out here and we're going to put them all together, okay? All right, uh, here, the 2024 budget tables focus on investment spending for new projects. So they are getting close. Well, actually, I think they had the meeting Sunday to release the, the money from the budgets, but I don't see any evidence that they did, um, except they're paying people. They paid April salaries. And they paid the Kurds, and I'll show you that in a bit. But anyway, so we thought perhaps this week, like tomorrow, they would be going over the schedules or budget tables for 2024, but I don't think it's going to happen, and I'll tell you why. Let's see. So here, here's something that may interfere with Sudani's trip. Regarding Sadani's visit to Washington, eight American lawmakers send a message to our president, all right? And his name is here, 
with seven legislators and look they wrote this letter they wrote a letter is he gonna read it i don't know oh it's quite blurry but um it's on twitter so for those of you who can tweet twit whatever <laughs> his name is tom cotton senator tom cotton so if you go to his twitter feed now you might have to scroll down because this came out on saturday and please do not go tweeting that man that he's crazy and hurry up and let the RV go. Please don't do that. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, here's a little bit about what. So, basically, it's like, how dare you meet with Sudani when they're still smuggling money to Iran and, and other things to Iran. And there's still an issue of militia in the country. So, I don't know. What, eight legislators out of what, 353? Is that how many we have in Congress? I don't know. I should know. But it's just something that came about. Maybe it's something. Maybe it's nothing. Let's hope it's nothing, right? Okay, so here, this was on Saturday. Kurdistan retirees rush with tremendous human momentum in front of banks to receive their salaries. So here's pictures. So, yeah, you can't really tell they're retirees. Well, these guys, they're bald-headed and gray hair, right? Look at them. Look how cute they are. Little old man and little lady old man. Come on, Martha, let's go get our money. And this guy, he looks like he's on a cane. Okay, but so, yeah, so that was Saturday. Yeah, her name's probably not Martha, but that's all I could think of. <laughs> Anyway, so let's see. I'm going to show you. I'm scrolling down because the picture that I want to show you is down here for some reason. Oh, maybe it's not even here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Here it is. Here it is. So this is, I'm going to make it, enlarge it. I have to cough. I apologize. <coughs> okay. So this is one, two, three, four, five. And I think there were two more, but these are the Kurds and they're going to the ATMs and they're taking out cash. <laughs> so they got their text messages. Hey, your money's in your account. And what did they do? Go to the ATM machine and take out cash. I like it. I like it. So they did pay them. Was that borrowed money? Was that uh, money from the budget? I don't know. I don't know. But they got some money. All right. So here, Parliamentary Finance expects the federal budget schedules to arrive next week. So, right? They said the Parliament Finance Committee next week, which they will then discuss them, but it is too early to talk about its provisions in detail. All right, so that was that. Now here, here is the spokesman, government spokesman. So Sudani approves what he says. And what does he say? The Council of Ministers will approve the budget schedules within two weeks. So here we are. We're in the second week of April. Okay. And you can read. It talks about stuff, numbers, and stuff like that. You can read that if you want. Let's see. Oh, this is really good. This is an interview of... Uh, hmm... Here, oh, his name is awfully close to murder, isn't it? Yeah, Mudar. Yeah, I'm not going to try to say that. If you can see this, you can see his name right there. But, okay, all he is is a member of Finance Committee, the Parliamentary Finance Committee. He's not CBI. He's not Sudani. Uh, but he says some interesting things. Um, He talks about... The parallel market will witness a greater decline 
so the dollar right the exchange rate of the dollar will witness a further decline in 2024 <sighs> yeah i don't like that i want to hear april may right i don't want to hear 2024 but uh he said it was slow over the last five months but it was getting it was beginning it was the beginning geez louise of pushing it to be close to the exchange rate specified by the CBI and the decline will continue. So I'm hoping this week we'll see 1450. It got to 1460. Um, then it crept back up. So I'm hoping this week we'll see it hit 1450. So yeah, um, very easy to read because it is in English, but sensical, you know, English that makes sense. Here, what are the most prominent challenges of investments in Iraq? Basically, he says security, those laws that protect the investors, uh, corruption, ending corruption. Yeah, so um, it was pretty interesting. Oh, so here, I haven't done my commercial in a while, and the offer is back, it's up to $100. So, if you need a quick way without selling anything, without starting a business to earn $100, well, you'll have to come back. As you can see, I only have part of it. <laughs> I only have part of the uh, information here. But by the time you see this, it will all be there. Okay, Saturday. Saturday, Sadani gave a speech. Another speech. Oh, my gosh. But look at this. He says, my government has been preparing a comprehensive reform program to build state institutions. So I wasn't going to read this article because it said state institutions. So I'm thinking um, uh, like buildings, the ministries, right? But I was glad that I did because it does actually get into financial reforms and making the um, economic reforms a priority. And improving the economic reality because it's all about the living situation of the ordinary citizen right all right here this um, they put out controls for licensing digital banks in Iraq it's 21 pages it's all in Arabic I doubt it has a rate in it so I'm not <clears throat> excuse me I'm not going to translate it uh, because it's not one that you can copy and paste if it was i would do it um but here's the point based on the decision of the board of directors of this bank and in view of the need for diversification in the provision of banking services in light of technological i know i mess that word up all the time technological progress that contributes to enhancing financial inclusion by facilitating customers access to banking services we attach a link so oh I don't see the link here because maybe you do want to go maybe you know an easy way to um, let me make a note to myself to translate that so I will put the link there um, yeah or maybe another person that has a team of people will do that well, but then you might have to pay to see it. But it's just showing that they know they're going to have to have digital banks, right? And the guidelines to set them up and the licensing they have to get. So, I, like I said, I doubt it has a rate in it or anything like that. Okay, so it's just showing forward movement. We're not even halfway through. We're at 20 minutes. Okay. Washington is supportive of Sudani and bank sanctions target other parties. So this is just an article. This is an American report, actually, I believe. Nope, nope, sorry. It's another member of Parliamentary Finance Committee. Another is Shamari, but a different one. That's a different first name. And he said, America likes Sudani and his government. And the sanctions that they put on our banks, they weren't aimed at Sudani. They were aimed at other parties. Hmm. Who could those other parties be? Iran, perhaps? I don't know. 
पर आश भी न डैमी He's like, strange things happen to people when they talk about Iran. <laughs> But anyway, so, uh, yeah, so I thought that was neat for someone to say um, America likes Sudani. And then here's another. This says the National News Network. I've never heard of that. But according to Iraq's news, it's an American newspaper. All Sudani's visit to Washington will discuss a truce with the factions in exchange for lifting sanctions on banks. So there again, you have someone saying he's going to talk about lifting the sanctions, getting the troops out, right? Now, oh, so here's the other part of Sadar. So remember, Sadar is is getting his troops ready, right? His uh, grassroots people. And look at here. Sistani granted. So Sistani, if you knew, Sistani's like this 87-year-old holy man. And what he says goes, right? Even, even Sudani, who's the prime minister, may change some of his decisions based on Sistani. And guess what? Sistani was born in Iran. He's Iranian. But he's lived in Iraq for a long time. I think 47 years he's lived in Iraq. But anyway, he's been the ultimate holy man as long as I've been in this. And Sadar really, I really believe Sadar does not make a move without discussing it with him first. So, Sistani's so like, yes, my boy, you may return to political work. So, Sadar's going to be there. And I said, well, let's wait and see because sometimes something will come out and then two hours later, someone will come out and say, no, that wasn't true. I never said that or I was misquoted. Never. It's been a day and a half and they still, no one's come out and said, nope, that's wrong. So soon, I'm sure it will be announced that he'll be in the new, uh, election which i guess is next year i don't even want to i don't want to know because i don't want to be here <laughs> so i'm deluding myself is that a word delude i'm like oh if i don't if i don't know when it is i won't be here to see it right <laughs> uh, all right so for the first time The National Bank of Iraq makes an investment turning point worth 25 billion dinars. So the National Bank should sound familiar because last week I was all excited because they turned on the global banking system called Temenos. Temenos? Temenos? I don't know how you say it. So their first act, and remember 40,000 in two days, 40,000. Uh, people downloaded their app. Well, then remember just last week, those bonds went for sale on the stock market. Well, the National Bank of Iraq bought some of those bonds from the Iraqi Stock Exchange. So they're moving right along. Forward progress. That's all great. Doesn't mean we're going to the bank tomorrow, but that's great, right? Okay, now here, there's people out there who think the rate's going to be done by the time Sadani comes here. Well, I beg to differ. And here again is the government spokesperson, which means what? Sadani has said, you can say this to the people. So, Sadani will present a solution to the dollar crisis during his visit to Washington. So, this could just be something they're saying now, but by them coming out and saying this to me, there's that means the dollar rate is not going to change. So, which means the rate is not going to change before Sadani comes here. All right. So, you could read that if you want. It's just a three paragraph article, but Time is running out. Okay, this is a pretty long article. The future of the rentier state 
in Iraq. So I never heard of this until I started reading their articles, but a rentier state is a market, a country's market that relies solely on mostly one, their revenue comes from one uh, commodity and they have a closed market. And they want to move from that, right? Listen to this. For an ideology, ideological reason, these systems worked forcefully to prevent the emergence of a bourgeois class of major businessmen that would compete with any ruling political system. Now, though, they want to go to so if you're going to read anything, read this part right here. So now they want to go to a open market, but they changed, they even changed that phrase. They're not using the phrase open market, but they want to have multiple sources of income. And um, free, free trade market, I think is the phrase that's in here. So it's kind of long, see there? And it will only interest some people, but I put it there because it does give a good explanation of the past of where they were, where they are, and where they're going. All right? This is crazy. Iraq signs a memorandum of understanding with Siemens Energy and Schlumminger. I hope that's not the name. I hope that is just a mistranslation, but there it is, Schlumminger. Um, but they already have contracts with Siemens. Why are they signing more memorandums of understanding? I don't get it. But they look happy, don't they? Look at this guy back here. He's smiling. They're passing each other the official contracts. Well, memorandum of understandings. And yeah, it looks happy. So they are promising them they're going to have 24-hour electricity this summer. So we'll see. Okay, so I already showed you that was the picture of the Kurd people at the ATMs getting their money um, here. So Sunday's articles and even into today, they were mostly about Kurdistan. So I don't know what's going on with Kurdistan. But here, a delegation from Baghdad went to the region, which is Kurdistan, to discuss the oil file. Normally it's the other way around. Normally the Kurds go to Baghdad. So that was interesting. Um okay. Put a check mark right there. Hold your hold your spot. This guy, he's a prominent politician, but he's retired. But I remember him because how can you not remember this name? Is that Al Shabandar? Say that quickly. Is that Asha Bandar? <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not saying his name correctly. And I'm not making fun of it. But just that's how I remember him. Because how can you not remember that name, right? And um, he didn't have as much gray. I'll tell you that. But uh, anyway, so he was like, hey, you know, Sadani, when you go over to America, don't don't tell them to remove the troops instead focus on activating the strategic agreement and let's benefit from america's expertise uh i only thing i could imagine is if sudani said things like this he probably would say get thee behind me satan <laughs> Right? I'm going over there and I'm saying, you need to remove your troops now. We need our money. And yes, activate the strategic uh, framework. Right? But I don't know. He's 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 older. Clearly, he's older than Sadani. And he probably knows how America works. Right? But um, yeah, I just, I thought that was hilarious when I read that. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, so... So we're done with that guy, right? He's one of the few, and he's one of the few voices telling him, don't focus so much on getting the troops out, focus on this, right? So I thought that was interesting. Implementing the oil law will solve the problems between the region and the center. You think? So the region is Kurdistan, 
the center is Baghdad. Um, yeah. So here, oh, here's the European Union. Iraq is an important strategic partner for us. And he's meeting with the president with four names. Abdul Latif Jamal Rashid. Yeah. So talk about that. Here's an article about the SCOTA system. I have no interest in that at all, but some people do. So I put the article there. See how long it is. So boring too. But um, yeah, if you want to read it, it's there. And we could skip that also. So um, the central bank put out. Oh, okay. There's two. Oh, I only have one. And you know what? I didn't put the guy that got blown up. Oh, I put it somewhere else. Okay, but I'll just tell you about that anyway. Because you could find that in your local news. All right, so let's go back to this. Um, oh, let's see. The Central Bank of Iraq clarifies the mechanism for depositing oil revenues abroad. And there's another article. Um, but look here. Executive Order 13303. Hmm. If you don't know about that, there's a little, little bit of education there about that. So basically what this is saying is that we still have our money there because our money's protected. Okay. And if you're new... You should read this. Um, so, and here's the letter that's in Arabic. And I was able to translate. That was easy to translate. And there's another one um, that has another small little portion. But I think it's good. I would consider this to be education for the people that don't understand. Well, why is all of our oil money in their banks? See, it even says not limited to the Federal Reserve Bank. So we probably have, look at this, a Rock 2 account. So see, this is very um, informative if you care about things like that. Which technically we should because this possibly could be big money that could change our lives, right? So you should want to know about it. But it's so boring right but people who say well i need to see this in writing where is that stated well there you go right there right okay so what happened today that i don't think it's going to be a problem it could be a problem but i don't think it's going to be especially since i'm already out to june anyway right but if you don't know ice cream land right this is even though ice cream is icy but is i don't want to say it right someone from there took out a very high person and i think the number one guy in the iranian guard um so they're a little upset right and um it wasn't just him it was like seven other people and they did this in Damascus, which is where? In Syria. Now, Syria borders Kurdistan, but this embassy where it was, right, seems to be kind of far away. It's not right on the border. It's a little bit more inland. So that was not good in the eyes of Iran, right? And of course, they're going to retaliate. But the good thing is, none of this is taking place in Iraq. Even though the group calls themselves Islamic resistance in Iraq, they, and even Sudani has said, you can't use our country as a proxy to fight your wars. They told us that. They told Iran that. So hopefully, you know, They'll make them stick to that. So what we have to wait for now is to see what 
Iran does in retaliation. And hopefully they will headquarter from Yemen, which is where the Houthis are, I believe. Hopefully, and Iraq so wants to stay out of this. They're so close, right? So close to getting, I believe, getting their money given back to them. You know they don't want any parts of that, right? So, Pulse. Oh my gosh. This music keeps starting. You know what that means? That's like the music at the Grammys. It means shut up. You're talking too much. <laughs> ah, this actually, this is an article about, you know what? This is an article about the Vietnamese Dong. It's not good either. It says it's going to further depreciate by 3%. You see that right there? Analysts forecast that the Vietnamese Dong may, okay, may. Depreciate 3% against the U.S. dollar in the first half of 2024. But that's the first half, right? So if we go to June, which is almost, that's the end of the first half, right? Yeah. So um, I guess I'll post this because you can't see the, I have the cutoff right below the uh you can't see the link so i'll post this article too let me make a note so i'm gonna put the articles about iran because they're very short plus like i said you can go find what ice cream man did to the leader of the iranian guard you could search that and find lots of articles but just to have everything in one place i'll do that all right so you're all caught up for the weekend. Let's see what this week brings. And I probably won't post again until Wednesday, since today's Monday. But unless there's something super great, then I would post. But I'm not expecting it. But I would love for them to surprise me, right? Okay. So I hope this was helpful. And you see, they're moving along. They're doing things that they can do, right? and preparing it does seem that they are preparing for Sudani to come here and they're getting a lot of pre-work done so when he comes here it would be nice if they just had paper you know um agreements contracts they had to sign right all right so thank you i have a couple of new subscribers welcome new subscribers give me a chance i know i'm all over the place but it's just me by myself doing this I don't have a team of people. I don't have boots on the ground or bank contacts or anything. It's just me trying to help you guys see the story that the articles tell. And also you have to remember, that's what they tell up until this point. Tomorrow things could be totally different, right? But this is where we are for now. All right, so... I hope you had a wonderful Easter or Resurrection Day, whichever I did. Um, so now we move on to the first month of the second quarter. And I am calling this Ask For It April. All right. Thank you. Um, if there's a follow, join, whatever button where you're listening or watching, click that. So if all things work and they're supposed to, the next time I update, you'll be notified and enjoy the rest of your morning, night, noon, whatever time frame you're enjoying this content. And until next time.